All right, M4 Flowers um, 543, I hope I have your name right, requested that uh, I make a video about Jacobin Magazine, and then I make a series of videos about supposedly lefty publications, which I think is a magnificent idea, by the way. Um, if I look a little loosey-goosey, it's because I've already taken a sip of uh, my Bloody Mary beverage here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to try to remember everything they suggested I talk about. Well, they suggested I talk about one thing. So Jacobin Magazine. Jacobin Magazine is a supposedly socialist magazine. Uh, there are very few socialist publications that are American. There are very few socialist, truly socialist Americans. Most socialists are actually closeted liberals. Um, that's really what they are. And most people who call themselves socialists are functionally functionally liberals. That is to say, they behave like liberals, even though they agree maybe with the precepts of socialism. Their political behavior, uh, for example, they end up voting for the Democratic Party. Okay, So their voting behavior and what they actually do is kind of inseparable from liberals. So Jacobin Magazine has that name, Jacobin, which summons visions of the Jacobins in France as they guillotined members of the aristocracy there. So they chose this name as a radical statement to associate their publication with something radical. You know, equalité, fraternité, égalité, um, liberté. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it's basically just a slogan. That's the name. The name of the publication is meaningless. Now, I like certain aspects of Jacobin when it's historical. When they have a historical article, I think, or maybe an ideological article, they have certain fascinating points to make. Um, but the rest of the time, they're just a horror show. For starters, why is there a film critic? That makes no sense to me. Uh, I don't really care about a socialist analysis of a Marvel movie. That makes no sense at all. But anyway, uh, also, the critics, the film critics' takes on everything are just stupid. So anyway, putting that aside, their historical articles are interesting. Like if they have an article dealing with, let's say, early Marxists in Russia or something or Marxist theory inside the Soviet, inside not just Soviet Union, but in the United States, or leftist ideas in general, I think those are interesting, but certainly no more interesting than half a dozen other publications that can do the same. So what they do, that's just, you have to understand something. In the United States, you know, there's hardly a left at all. So... What they really stand for is they do things and they, they stand for things that are really not socialist. As I've been saying before, there's this concept in socialism. It's a big term. Try not to, you know, roll your eyes, but it's called parliamentary cretinism. And what does it mean? It means a bunch of people are really worried about whether Nancy Pelosi is going to pass something or um, whether um, the current Speaker of the House, the Republican, is going to pass something, or what happens when it gets to the Senate, and what kind of procedure is there going to be, and what's in the bill, and whether the, there's going to be a committee that's going to produce oversight for the banks, and what's this latest um, rule that's being given to the National Labor Relations Board, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, Daily... Sausage making, grindhouse inside the Beltway politics. 
there is this concept in socialism that that is, number one, a waste of time, and number two, based on incrementalism. That is, just getting a inch every year. Instead of getting half a loaf, you, you don't even get a slice. You just get crumbs, but that's worth it because every once in a while, instead of getting crumbs, every once in a while you get half a slice, right? That's parliamentary um, cretinism. It's the idea that you can slouch towards Bethlehem, that you can crouch and slouch and crawl on your belly towards socialism when you cannot. Okay, that's what Jacobin actually represents. They represent voting for Democrats, lesser of two evils, incrementalism, being concerned about the regulatory state. They have proposed that it is worthwhile to seek the Northern European model. That's one of their big uh, concepts which they push right away. That's not socialist. Um, another thing which they do, which is horrendous, is they have featured people and promoted people who are clearly not socialists, like, for example, Anna Kasparian, who I think now they're too embarrassed to have on their channel or they can't afford to have her on the channel because everything that happens on YouTube is financial. So everyone that appeared, that appears on podcasts or that appears on a Jacobin show or appears on the Young Turks, Anna Kasparian is from the Young Turks, all of that, is money. If they're not getting paid directly, then they expect to get paid at some point. Um, and that's really what's going on. So, but by having her, even if they weren't paying her, having her is a tremendous insult to socialists because Anna Kasparian hates the poor. Anna Kasparian is for spending more money on the police. Anna Kasparian is for spreading moral panic about trans people. So that's awful. As M4 Flowers. 354 has pointed out, because he reminded me, that Jacobin Magazine has also purchased, using a capitalist corporation which they paid money to, um, they purchased Twitter followers, artificial Twitter, Twitter follower count increases. That's what they purchased. Um, so they don't actually have as many Twitter followers as uh, is apparent from their profile page uh, that's already embarrassing but that goes to show to something it goes to show what's going on in, in, in the world of activism in that it's very difficult to be an activist in the United States without going into marketing because everything is money if I set up a campaign I need to have a corporation funded or I need to have rich donors funded if I set up a school a nonprofit school i have to get donors which are usually rich people if i set up um, some other kind of nonprofit to advocate for better eco policies i have to get rich people involved to donate that's generally how it's gone 99 percent of the time unfortunately very unfortunately there's more of that going on than mutual aid i'm afraid So anyway, oh, that's good. That's how it works. So everyone is falling into the trap. Another factor is that in the United States, leftist politics, if you want to use that phrase, I use the phrase loosely, is played by the top 15 or the top 10% of the population, whether you're the guy that founded Jacobin Magazine. What's his name? can't remember his name right now or Jimmy Dore, or Sam Cedar, or any of these people involved in the game, the people over at the Movement for a People's Party, um, or Jen Uger himself, uh, all of these people are drawn from the management class. They're graduate students. Certainly they have a basic college education. It's very difficult to go, let's say, to custodians in a local office building and go, would you like to start a publication? <laughs> or would you like to start a political action committee? Uh, or would you like to start a nonprofit? Or it's just not the real world that we live in. And this is the biggest challenge to the left, is being able to raise money, not just to be able to do things, 
be able to have a space that you can use for meetings and for classes where you can talk about political theory or you can talk about legal education or what have you. But being able to raise money to pay for, literally pay for strikes. Because when you strike, you need to have money uh, to avoid, you know, starving. A lot of people don't strike because they, they wouldn't have money to pay for food. They would miss out on rent or uh, they would not pay their mortgage. And that's a huge anti-motivation to striking. And by the way, elites know this and elites have talked about this. It's been discussed by bureaucrats and politicians for a long time. That's one of the reasons that they don't really worry. They're not worried because people in general don't strike because they would ha actually have to suffer and go without and, and lose their homes uh, or lose their apartments or not be able to take care of their children or not be able to buy their children clothes or diapers or the medicine that they need. They desperately need these jobs. And, it, and a lot of times they can't even go to from one job to another job, which they would prefer because the job that they hate has better health care, right? So there's a lot of control over the working class. And at this point, that's really what it's about. Uh, but that also makes it difficult for the left to exist because without workers, without strikers, you have no left. It just doesn't get off the ground. And all you have in its place is people like Jacobin Magazine who talk about passing bills uh, and doing the mechanics and the horse races of daily politics and not about real socialism because that's not what they're here for. They're, they're here to develop some idea of voting for a particular politician, getting you inside the Democratic Party, and then getting some kind of incremental stuff done, you know, like little by little. In the meantime, please enjoy these crumbs. So, you're correct, I'm Four Flowers, that Jacobin Magazine is transparently awful. They purchase followers because they're into self-promotion, because they're untethered to the working class. They are bourgeois, they are elitist, they are incrementalist, they are involved in parliamentary cretinism, they are not socialist. Um, and the publication in general is fake and stupid. And they have individuals like Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks on who are not socialist. And they engage also in hipster Marxism where they talk about theories and, you know, the reason that, I mean, for example, they were having a conversation about, what was it, Occupy... Occupy Wall Street failed because they were unable to make a Marxist-Leninist argument. That was their, <laughs> that was the thesis. That 1% versus the 99%, although an improvement uh, in, in terms of branding, didn't really increase class consciousness. In reality, it's not really about class consciousness, is it? It's really about the fact that it's too difficult to organize the poor, not primarily because they're not taught enough theory, but because pragmatically it's difficult to organize the poor and the working class because they're barely surviving. And, you know, and it, but yeah, there are other people there besides Anna Kasparian well, she doesn't really do any videos. She hasn't done any videos of late. But you have others. Let me look up this guy's name because it's, I always forget him. Uh, Vivek Chibber. Right. So Vivek Chibber is another. Literally, he went on um, Jacobin to talk about real class analysis. Right. Because he knows how to do it. Nobody else does. And he, in the in the context of this, He's also, besides doing this hipster Marxism stuff, he's also telling people that they can actually get to socialism via incrementalism and via Northern European-style social democracy. 
that's actually his thesis. Uh, of course, that's contradictory. That doesn't make any sense. You can't be a Marxist and say that. It's, it just doesn't make any sense because you're not going to get there. And there's no form of real socialism, not real socialism. Fake socialism, okay, but there's no sense of real socialism. You're not going to get anyone who's a real socialist to tell you that social democracy produces socialism. Why? Because social democracy or liberalism would produce a welfare state, which we had in the United States. And the welfare state's function is to make things a little better for the working class, and in it increases, as I've talked about in this channel, it increases the size of the middle class while compressing the inequality. Just like what happened here in the 50s and 60s uh, under the New Deal and high taxes. Um, but it preserves class relations, meaning it preserves the power of the capitalists and of corporations, and it leaves them in the driver's seat. So sooner or later, that's going to turn around on you. That's number one. Number two, there's still a massive amount of poverty, and there was a massive amount of poverty in the 50s and 60s. I've met people who've described, who grew up at, back then who described their very modest conditions. So these are not solutions. In fact, the Northern, P Northern European social democracies like Norway and Sweden and Finland, although especially Norway and Finland miles away from us at the moment, they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable because, like, for example, Sweden, a lot of their initial social democracy has been rolled back. So what the liberal project does is it takes the steam out of the working class. It pleases them. And the only debate is between total crumbs, which is what Joe Biden wants, and an occasional half a slice, which is what Jacobin wants. Or maybe every once in a blue moon, half a loaf. That's what the debate's about. You're never really going to get, you know, dictatorship of the proletariat, for example. I mean, you'll get some aspiring middle-class workers to be on corporate boards uh, and voice some of their concerns, maybe, under the Northern European model. You have a more powerful or robust welfare state. You might have higher minimum wage you know, laws, but ultimately you're not going to get a socialist state in that, that way. So really, what are these individuals like Jacobin Magazine? And I'll talk about current affairs next time. But what are they? They're businesses. They're businesses, just like Cenk Uger, the Young Turks, is a business. And Jimmy Dore is a business. And Kyle Kulinski is a business. Uh, and uh, David Pakman is a business. That's what these people are engaged in. There's nothing wrong with earning money, I guess, to feed yourself and clothe your family, etc. But these people go a little bit beyond that, right? They're trying to make a million dollars a year. So you think about that next time you see somebody telling you, here's some hipster Marxist talking points, and here's how... We can get something from AOC. Uh, and here's how, you know, we need to be concerned about these elections. Uh, you're not getting anything from the elections. You're not getting anything from AOC. And you're not getting anything from Jacobin Magazine. Um, so if it's not a historical article, I'm not interested. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't listen uh, to Chiver and his incrementalism. I wouldn't listen to Anna Kasparian. I wouldn't listen to any of these extremely weak fake socialists from Jacobin Magazine. Uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I want to thank you, and you know who you are, for making that request. Um, and uh, I think I will take it up um, and turn this into a series. So until next time, thank you and goodbye.